Hey everybody, it's Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. And in this week's episode, we're gonna go ahead and change the lighting in the garage here. I know it seems a little odd, but when we got this house, it has one single light on the ceiling. And after moving all of our stuff from Louisiana to have a wood shop back in here with the bandsaw and lathe and whatnot, it's just not enough light to do anything when you don't have the garage door open. And even then, the lighting's poor. So we're gonna go ahead and test out something out. I'll go ahead and show this. These are, um, replacements for 48 inch fluorescent tubes and these are LED strips. Uh, there's actually 10 of them in here and they connect with a cord between each of them. So in this episode what I intend to do is pull the ceiling light down in here, the single um, fixture with two light bulbs in it, replace that fixture with a set of outlets and then I'm going to wire these in and we're going to decide where on the ceiling we should put these 10 um, LED sets of lights and hopefully this will really light up the garage significantly. So hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. I know it's a little different than a lot of other ones, but I hope you guys do enjoy this. Let's get this thing started. The first I'll show you uh, with a little bit wider of an angle what everything sort of looks like in here, what kind of fixture we have, and then we'll unbox this together. And I'll show you how we go about, one, testing them, two, determining how bright they are, three, planning the locations of where we want to install all of them, and then getting them all set up, including wiring uh, an outlet where the light fixture was. So as I step down into the garage, you can sort of see here the actual garage itself. What I want to do is just kind of show you what we have here. You'll notice right behind the garage door opener, we have a single um, light fixture there. That's all that's there. So you'll notice this is a little bit wider than a two car garage. And um, as I mentioned before, right behind the actual garage door opener there in the ceiling, you see that light fixture. But I also have the door that blocks most of this. So when the door is up, uh, it's going to be blocking any lights that I might have mounted on the ceiling right up above it. So I have to think about how do I want to light this both when the door is open as well as when the door is closed. So a couple of things for me to consider. And you'll notice this single light just does not put out much light when you figure a whole workshop here. So that has got to come out and be replaced. Well, forgive my workbench, if you will. Uh, Deb and I got new appliances the other day, and we have the old ones sitting out here until they're removed. So I am going to use our old stove in the garage here as my tabletop for this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open these units up. Let me pick this up here. I ordered these online. These are... Um, they're pretty inexpensive. So on Amazon, they're about 150 bucks for 10 of these 40 watt equivalent light fixtures. So if you think about a typical fluorescent tube uh, shop light, it'll be a four foot section with two tubes in it. Um, that equals 40 watts of light typically. Uh, and if you buy those at your local, you know, your local store, right, your local uh, Home Depot or Lowe's, you're probably paying anywhere from 20 to 30 bucks or so per fixture. 150 for 10 of these things. Um, so it seemed like a really good deal. The proof's gonna be in the pudding. Let's go ahead and open them up, see what they look like, see the quality of them. The good news is they're LEDs, so they're gonna be light. I think we'll be able to just hook them right to the ceiling and not have to worry about heavy anchors or finding a stud, which would be a kind of a, a bonus here as well, given their weight. So let's unbox these, we'll open them up, we'll see what they look like, and we'll test it all out. First things first, we have our instructions and Whatever the heck this is. Yeah, five to twenty dollars off my next purchase from this manufacturer. Um, in typical fashion, I'm sure these things are imports from somewhere. Instructions are pretty limited, but to be perfectly candid, how hard could this really be, right? These things are all predefined plugs. So. All right, let's take a look at what each of these looks like. You just pull one of them out. So here's the fixture. Um, they do have chains to go ahead and hang them. So if we want to hang them from the ceiling in a traditional way, we can certainly do that. And then there, it looks like there's two sets of LED strips in here. Um, and then we have a power cord that lets us connect up to each one of these. Uh, and then you can also um, daisy chain them together, right? So use small cords to daisy chain each one together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just test this thing out. I wanna see what it looks like. So very simply, I am going to just plug the end of this cord in here 
to the end it fits in and we will power this girl up. All right, let's see what we've got. So I'm just gonna go ahead and flip the switch on this and see. And we got absolutely nothing. But I think it's because my extension cord isn't plugged in. <laughs> Yes, it certainly helps. So now we're just gonna go ahead and turn this thing on and see kind of what they look like at this point. So uh, away we go. All right. You know, it looks pretty decent. You can kind of see the amount of light coming off of that. Um, yeah, that seems pretty good. The next thing I wanna do is measure each one of these and really figure out what the layout should look like in the ceiling. So these are each 45 inches long. And let's take a look at my cordage here and see what I've got. So this is good. What this means is I can kind of come up with any configuration I wanted. If I wanted to actually put three of them along one wall and put them in one outlet and three along another wall and put them in another outlet, I certainly could do so. Or if I wanted, I could plug one set in and then just pigtail them all together without a switch between them, which would be perfect. All of these actually plug into an outlet and you'll notice these have the same connection on both ends and that's because it will plug from the end of one unit into the next and just carry my signal forward. So I think we have a pretty good understanding of what's in the box here. We also have all of our chains for hanging them. Let's just take a quick look at how these go. Let me kind of show you the way that the, the instructions call for kind of hooking these up. Uh, each light fixture comes with these small metal hooks. Um, basically, we're just going to take the hook, hook it into each side of the end of the fixture. And then it would just be a matter of connecting um, a hook up on the ceiling and hooking this piece right on there and you hang the light at whatever location you want it. Let's figure out our layout before we bother unboxing all of these guys. So now it's just a matter of planning how I want to go ahead and put this out here. So what I've done is I started with a bit of a drawing of the garage, really rough, right? It's approximately 17, I'm sorry, approximately 18 feet deep, about 19 feet across for the majority of it. We have a couple of these little outcrops here. Um, the door is about two, inch, uh, two feet from the side here, so I'd like to get the lights at least three feet out. And I think I'm gonna go with a pattern that looks something like this. I'm thinking of how I'm gonna route to the, to the plugs, and I'd like to do them all in one connection. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one here like this, one here in the middle, about three feet out, another one here, another one here. I will do two across the front. Probably a little longer, I guess. I will do another one here to match what we have on that side over there. So this gives me two, four, six, eight, ten lights. So this one will be number one, number two, number three, number four, number, ooh, this is going to be hard upside down, number five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, and this one will be 10. So my plug will start here. Go to this, I'll have a cable, 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 and then I will terminate right there. That gives me, if that's not enough light and I wanna light this area up, that gives me another outlet up here that I could then leverage and do another pattern of additional lights if I want them. Though, I think this is gonna be pretty bright when we get them turned on. So let's go ahead and, um, and lay this out. So you can see I've laid the lights out on the floor along this side, along the front of the garage here. And forgive me, I'm gonna move stuff around. But then I'll also have the lights right here along this edge. And, um, and then I'll have the couple of pieces that will go at an angle. And I'm thinking something along those lines there and just testing out one of them for sure. I mentioned I hung the one light up here and it's interesting, these go at about a 45 degree angle from the light fixture over to that corner and then they'll run parallel down the uh, side walls of the garage. But with just one light in there, I wanted to go ahead and power it up and see just what it does for light. And I, it's always hard to capture this on camera. I'm hoping you can see just the difference this makes. I'm just gonna connect up this plug 
and you can really see the difference with that light. Now it's a little bit behind me, and it's probably shadowing my face a little bit, but it makes a pretty big difference. Really lit up for getting something off the shelves or whatnot. Um, and I suspect that when I get three more down this side, it's gonna be lit up well for running any of the power tools here, whether it's the sander, the lathe, or the, or the bandsaw, whatever it happens to be. So let me go ahead and unplug this and start getting the other ones all mounted up here. I think it's time to initiate time-lapse. I have eight lights installed. I'm getting ready to take Deb out to dinner for her birthday and I didn't get quite a time, enough time to finish them all today. But I have the first one that's at a 45 degree angle from where the light socket um, will be converted to a plug back. Then three down along one side of the garage, two along the front of the garage, and I have two more just above the camera along that side of the garage. I'll put another one on that side toward the back and then another one at a 45 degree angle, kind of mirror image to this one going the other direction. That'll be all 10 of the lights. Um, I have two little LED lights just for filming on me now, little light panels. Uh, I'm going to try turning this on. Don't know how well it'll show up given I already have these two bright spotlights on me, but it'll be interesting to see how this looks. I'll turn off these studio lights uh, and then I'll turn it back on again just to show you the difference there. So that's quite a difference. I have the studio lights off. The only light you're seeing is what's coming in through the front windows here of the garage and a little bit in the, the little windows on the top side of the garage here. But again, I will get this turned on. You'll probably see the camera adjust as soon as it does come on, but here we go. Yeah, this is an amazing amount of light. This is phenomenal, actually. This would be great. And what I like best about this is when I'm standing at a tool, even with my back and the light right above my head, it's not so far back like this one in the center was that I become the shadow to anything along the outer walls that I'm trying to do work on. I'll show you what I mean. If I were to be doing work at this bandsaw, when I'm standing right here, I mean, there's a little shadow here from just the one above me, but I have enough light from all other directions that I would be able to see my work phenomenally well. I think the same is gonna go for working at the lathe right here and even the belt sander and disc sander right behind me. We got back from our dinner last night and um, I decided this morning I would go ahead and put up the first couple lights. And when I came out this morning and turned them on, only one was coming on. I actually have one bad one, and I'll go into that in a few minutes here, but let me get this last light hung up here. Ooh, I might have gone a little too far. Whew, that was a close measurement. <laughs> Let's get down and we'll turn these things on. All in all, I think I'm fairly pleased with these. They are really, really bright in here. I don't have 10 up, I only have nine, given what I just said here about the um, about one of them not working. It's odd. Um, it was actually the second light in the string that was off, and uh, it was completely off. When I took it out of the string and put another one in its place, it was fine. And by the way, everyone downwind of it, or down line of it also went out. So they must be um, set up to where if one's bad, it doesn't pass the electricity all the way through. Kind of makes sense. Um, however, when I took it down and I just connected it single with a, a single plug into the wall, one side of the LEDs came on, not the other. So. Not a complete loss, I may end up taking it apart, using it for something else, put it under cabinet lights or light up in a closet or something like that. Uh, it, it should still work for that. But in the garage, I now have nine instead of 10 of these, but man, oh man, is it bright. Actually, before I show you what the lights look like, I wanna do one last thing here just to sort of clean it up. And that is to attach the wire along the edge of the ceiling and down to an outlet. I initially said I was gonna replace the light in the ceiling. Um, but that's just two light bulbs. They're LEDs, they use very little electricity. I think what I'm gonna do is leave that alone so that if we're just coming in with the car or something like that and we want that light on, great, that's fine. If I'm doing a workout here and I need something brighter, then I'll turn these on subsequently. And it was pretty easy to do. I'm just gonna run a wire to it, connect it up to the smart home connections. Um, and it's as simple as just letting our, our voice control device out here, our, our Amazon Echo, um, letting it know that I wanna turn the lights on in the garage and the shop lights will come on. So let me get that tacked up first and then we'll get going. I just went ahead and finished tying all the um, lights up into the ceiling and tacking the wire down along the wall to an outlet. I decided against replacing the overhead light here as I 
mentioned earlier, and I'll show you what all that looks like. Um, I also mentioned that I had one problem with one of the lights, and this morning when I came out, after they've been on for an hour or two, um, one of the lights only has one of the two strips lit up on it. Um, still casts quite a bit of light, but it wasn't passing the electricity from one end through the other. So I went ahead and took this one out of the circuit, if you will, out of the series. Um, and I still have plenty of light in here. Just so I'm in the garage right now with no lights on. Um, the only light that's on is the, the little light built into the garage door opener. I just closed the door, so it's still on. Um, you are seeing some light coming in from these windows along the top of the garage door, and there's a set of windows in the front of the house here as well in the garage. But just to give you an idea on the difference here, um, I'm going to... I'm going to bleep out the name I have for my Amazon Echo so that it won't trigger yours. So you'll hear a blank in the audio for a second, but just give you an idea of what this is like. Turn on the shop lights. Okay. And you can see the difference. It is phenomenal difference in here. Um, I am really pleased with just how much light these give off. Uh, and I was a little bit worried having them just on the perimeter that the center of the room wouldn't have enough light in it. But even if I were to be working right here, there's enough light from all directions that I'm not shadowed. If I set a table up out here, or a table saw, or was doing some work, really good lighting. If at some point I determine that it's not quite enough, I can just put a couple more of these strips up on the ceiling. At this price, I, you know, look, these things are about 15 bucks per light at this price, 150 bucks for a pack of 10. Even with one not working for nine of them, great deal. They came with, um, they all came with a patch wire that goes between the two. So if you're gonna just sort of string two lights together, you get a five foot cord for that. So there were nine of those in there. And then there were 10 of these cords. So if you wanted to run these individually, you could plug it into a regular 110 volt outlet. Um, and then it has an on off switch right on it with the plug on the other end. So I have one of these connected to all of these lights strung together, but I could easily use this one and put it somewhere else. I put it in our closet, for example, if I wanted extra light and just run it off of a single cord. Um, I don't know what I'll do with it, quite frankly. Just leave it sit here for now. But would I recommend these? Absolutely. I'll put a link down in the description below for where you can get them if it's something you're interested in. This is not sponsored. Um, we just needed light in our garage badly. And I went down to Home Depot and I was going to buy all those fluorescent tubes and as many LEDs as we have in the house. I thought, what am I doing? It's been years since I put lights up in a garage or a shop, but I knew I wanted something a little bit more efficient. I tried to keep the wiring on these really simple. I basically just ran a small extension cord right up the ceiling. And then you'll notice between each set of lights here, there's a pigtail or a jumper wire, whatever you want to call it. And I just have them nicely bundled right on the top of each particular light fixture. As we move over to this one, I have some right up here on top of this fixture. And it's the same as we go all the way around the room. You can see there, I have some on this one as well. And they terminate right here. So my last wire goes between these two lights. I hope you enjoyed this week's video about how to go ahead and add LED lighting to your shop to make it bright and workable. And with that, turn off the shop lights. We'll see you guys later. Okay. Turn on the shop lights. Okay. Turn off the shop lights.